Hello, this is a welcome video for IME 315 Financial Decision Making for Engineers for winter 2021. My name is Liz Thompson and I'm going to be going through a couple topics in this video that are going to help you to orient yourself to this class. So first of all, I'm going to give a welcome, which I already did. I'm going to talk a little bit about myself so a little so you know a little bit about who I am. I'm going to talk about 2020 and how just how difficult it's been for us this year. Um, and hope for 2021. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the online course and how it's structured, the expectations, grading and due date, organization, and also importantly, how to contact me. So first of all, a little bit about myself, just so you know who I am. Um, my name is Dr. Liz Thompson. Um, I was previously, my previous name was Liz Schlemer. Um, and I actually prefer that you call me Liz. So if you'd like to, that would be great. Um, I have a deep connection to Cal Poly. I went to school here. Um, and I also have been working at Cal Poly for about 27 years. So quite a long time. Um, I'm also... Uh, I also have two of my three children went to Cal Poly. One was actually an industrial engineer major and she graduated in 2010. And then another um, is a psychology major, but she was also the center on the Cal Poly women's basketball team. So um, there's a lot of ways in which I'm connected to Cal Poly. Um, one of the important things I do is I'm an advisor to EWB, which is Engineers Without Borders, and then also the Critical Global Engagement Club. And in these two clubs, we do a lot of conversation about who we are in the world and how it is that we um, kind of engage with other communities in a uh, ethical way. So um, it's really important group of people to me and um, it's, a, it's really important work. So if that's something you're interested in, you might want to look into those two clubs. Um, I think they're they're quite amazing. Also last year, I was at Cal State LA all year. I was a visiting professor um, in engineering education at Cal State LA and I very much enjoyed my time there, although it was cut short a bit because of the pandemic. But um, it was an incredible experience to get to know the um, students at that school and the faculty. And um, just to work in an urban environment like that was really quite something. I'm very interested in social justice and particularly power and how that um, influences sort of how we function and systemic um, problems in, in our culture and particularly in engineering. I'm also very interested in the history and how this um, these things were established and where they came from and where they started. Um, so you'll probably see some of that in the um, content of this course, but just know that's definitely my orientation when I'm thinking about research and stuff. I'm also um, an educational research. So even though I'm a professor in industrial engineering, my area of research is educational research. I'm particularly interested in structural changes. An example of that would be grading and how that impacts engagement and learning for students. I'm also really interested in integrated learning. So not just um, technical learning, but also social learning so that those are integrated into the content area. And again, you will see um, both of these in the um, in the course that you're taking in this IME 315 course. Another area that I'm really interested in is change management and how change happens and how to manage that and how to how to cope with it and how to encourage other people to um, sort of accept it. So that's another area of research. Um, I had 10 years in industry. I worked for an oil company actually for 10 years. Um, I look back on that and I think I'm not sure how I did that and I'm Pretty sure I couldn't do it now, but it was a great job. I learned a lot about corporate America. I learned a lot about being part of an, that kind of organization. Um, I was an IE undergrad, as I said. Um, I also have a MS in industrial and systems engineering and an MBA from USC. And so it should say from USC, not and USC. Um, I have a PhD in education from UCSB and I'm 27 years as an instructor. Those are kind of my credentials. Um, much of the work I did in industry is in the area of this class. So a lot of things about finance and a lot of information about um, how to make decision making, a um, lot of experience in that area. I'm really comfortable with this particular class. I actually don't want to ignore the 
craziness we're in the midst of right now. And I want to sort of just say, I know this is a hard time for all of us. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, and I'm really, really hopeful for 2021. But if we look back on 2020, of course, the COVID-19, the pandemic, the shift to online instruction. So for many of us, we we aren't able to be together. There's a lot of economic uncertainty um, with people with the shutdown of the economy because of the pandemic. Also George Floyd's murder and the subsequent Black Lives Matters protest that really um, allowed us all to see systemic racism and the impact it has on all of us. Um, and that, that was a big issue. Um, California wildfires. So as always, there was there are California wildfires towards the around July and August, we had quite a bit and that was really difficult. And also just this feeling of what else could happen. Um, my hope is that in 2021, we'll have a nice fresh year and everything will be better as we move towards the um, vaccine. Um, but who knows, we'll have to just um, keep tabs on all of that. But as we look at this online course, um, I want to be clear that this particular course has actually been online f since um, 2019, so a year before the pandemic. Um, this was designed as an online course. It was it was approved. It has some um, pretty rigorous looks at how to design online courses. So I'm hoping you can maneuver through it um, in a typical way that you might be able to maneuver all online courses. So um, I'm going to go through these things, expectations particularly grading and due dates, organization, and how to contact me. So um, it's going to be important to start with this um, course logistics. And there's a lot of information in this particular tab that you can um, look through. Um, obviously, you, you made it here because you're watching this video, because I don't think there'd be any other way for you to get to this video. But I also want to um, look at um, particularly the expectations in the class. So it's important for me to, as an instructor, to um, actually that you understand where I'm coming from and um, what you can expect from me. So lots of times expectations will be about what I expect from you, but this is more about what you should expect from me. So I'm going to read these to you because they're pretty important to me. Um, as the instructor, I will recognize this unusual time we were living through by accommodating your needs to the best of my ability and intending to current events when appropriate. I will attempt to see you for who you are rather than through stereotypes. I will welcome different ways of understanding, knowing, being. I will attempt to understand your point of view. I will attempt to be fair, including the fair consideration of ideas. I will prepare the course content so that you don't that I don't waste your time. I will use the most current scientific understanding of how people best learn. And I will trust that you know yourself and your needs, interests, and values better than I do. So that's really um, what my pledge to you is. And what I'd like you to do is if you could go to the link and say as a student, what can um, we in the class um, count on you for? I would really appreciate that. I'm um, particularly related to grading too. So I think I told you that um, this grading is different than you might see in other classes. So the first thing is there's really only three grades that you can get in this class, a C, a B, or an A. Sorry about that. Um, also, you could probably get an incomplete too. Um, and then um, in order that how to get those grades are that um, in order to get a C, you'll have to complete 90% of the assignments, discussion posts, and quizzes, pass the two sets, tests with a 90% or higher, and there'll be multiple um, re test retakes, and that will give you a passing grade in the class. So it's a little confusing for you, maybe because that 90% often corresponds to a um, A level, but in this class, 90% on these minimum requirements will get you a C. If you want a B, you can um, complete one project. And if you want an A, you can complete two projects. So a little bit um, more on the assignments. Um, so the assignments and posts and quizzes, um, um, this will help to keep you on track. There's suggested due dates for this. 
Um, but I just want to make sure that you understand this is not a hard due date, that part of the way that I've designed this class is there's flexibility in um, how you complete the topics. The hard deadline um, is actually on March 21st. So just making sure that you know that that's when the last time in order for me to be able to do grades, I need it by March 21st. Um, when you get an assignment, the, um, you'll get some the grader or I will look at the assignment and you will either get a 0.5 which indicates the sum assignment is not quite correct and you can resubmit it for complete credit or you'll get a one which indicates that you've had full credit so it's kind of like pass fail and also you'll be indicated that you can get um, a higher grade on that um, exams so it'll be a take-home format you have a 24 hour window to take that. Um, you have multiple retakes. So here, if you can actually look at when the, when the, when the exams are first given, and then every couple days they'll be, or every week or something, they'll be um, between th um, three to five days, there'll be another retake. Um, and you will have to retake it until you get 90% or better. And then the last thing is that projects are all due on March 19th. So if you want to get a, a or B, um, you will need to submit it then. So hopefully you understand grading. If you don't, please let me know. Um, email me or message me or something. That would be fine. Um, also, just I want you to, if you, at the bottom of this, I'd like you to indicate what grade you would like in the class. One of the great things about this grading technique is actually you decide your grade. I don't decide it, you decide it. If you are, if this is a, like your last quarter and you just really want to just be, have a kind of um, not a lot of work, you can get a C. Go ahead and do it as a C. Or if you're taking credit and a credit, which some of you are able to do. Um, if you want to get an A, you can say, okay, well, I'm going to be doing a couple projects and I think I'd like an A. So you can decide yourself about this. So the content of the course is organized, as you saw from the home page. It's organized by um, the logistics and then the different contents for the first exam and then for the second exam. And then the exam links will be available when um, the 24 hour window is such and then the very bottom you have the projects that are available so hopefully that'll it's pretty easy to maneuver this class um, as you move through it and ho finally how to contact me um, so my email I can message through canvas although for some reason my messages through canvas don't come through as well um, probably text me or email me would be better I, I do have student or office hours um, at these particular times um, also, I can, I can do Zoom meetings on requests. You can text or you can call me. So hopefully that gave you a good orientation to the class. I'm sorry the video was a little bit long, but um, I hope it'll help you know what to expect this quarter.